Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 228. O love divine that dwells serene, whose light of life has no eclipse, we feel thy comfort, though unseen, and lay our hand upon our lips. Hymn number 228. Scriptural will be given by Nancy from New Jersey. 1 Corinthians Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. Psalms the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
Our Father, Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Now let's sing hymn number 148. In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. And safe is such confiding, for nothing changes here. The storm may roar without me, my heart may low be laid. But God is round about me, and can I be dismayed? Hymn number 148.
welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here with our roundtable discussion, which is kind of like a Sunday school for adults. We talk about the lesson, other subjects that need to be covered, and we learn how to practice better in our lives Christian science. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, or if you'd like to hear it again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you'll also be able to find it on our YouTube channel and our Vimeo channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and that Sunday school has its own teleconference number so that children anywhere in the world can attend. In fact, many of our Sunday school students don't live in the area, and they attend via telephone. And that means that if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, your child can also attend. Just call us, we'll give you the number, and our Sunday school teachers would be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And if you have a testimony to give, you can even participate. And that's available on our church teleconference number for the church itself. We're going to be busy this week. Our Thanksgiving service will be held this coming Thursday, November 28, at 11 a.m. And at that meeting, there will be opportunities to give testimonies of gratitude that are appropriate for this season. We're going to have some really good music, some really good readings. So please join us this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. And then the following Saturday, November 30th, we're going to have our next Bible study session. And that will take place Saturday, November 30 at 10 a.m., the Bible study questions are already on our website, so after the service today, please be sure to check them out and join us next Saturday. You'll be glad you did. And of course, at all of our services, if you attend in person, we do have a nursery available for infants and toddlers, so you can bring the whole family. We have 18 different websites in 18 different languages that provide the very finest Christian science literature available to people around the world, in many cases in their own language. And each of our websites, everything you find on them is offered free. You can read, listen, download, print, without charge. Freely we have received, and freely we give. This is our missionary work, and we are so grateful for those of you who have found Christian Science, have found healing through one of our websites. And we're also grateful to those of you who contribute to this wonderful cause financially so that we can keep providing this to the world. I'd like to point out one of the articles that we're now featuring on our English website entitled Divine Help by Duncan Sinclair. If you want to know where the very best help comes from, this is a good article. I recommend it highly. Divine Help by Duncan Sinclair. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. 
And now we're going to have a reading of a testimony of healing from our textbook, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Andrea from Idaho. Good morning. From page 690 of Science and Health, Through Great Tribulations. When I attempt to make plain what Christian science has done for me, world's words fail me. For 20 years, I was a constant sufferer, my spine having been injured when I was very young. As a little child, I suffered so much that I would look up to the stars and beg God, who I thought might be up there somewhere, to take me away from the earth. I was so tired. A great wall of pain seemed to separate me from the pleasures enjoyed by others, and I could not explain how I felt, because no one could understand. Years passed, and I saw my earthly happiness swept away. My heart was broken, and I did not know what to do. I cried for help, day after day and night after night, although I was not sure what God was, nor where he was. I only knew that I suffered and was in need of help, and that there was no earthly help for either mind or body. I loved purity, truth, and right always, and this made evil seem a most terrible reality. I was unable to cope with it, and so found myself in despair. This was my condition when I commenced reading Science and Health. I was ready for its message, and in ten days... There came a wonderful insight into the truth which heals the sick and binds up the brokenhearted. All pain left me, and I had a glimpse of the new heavens and the new earth, and was beginning to be fed by divine love. I had suffered for years with insomnia. That night I rested like a child and awoke the next morning well and happy. A flood of light daily illumined the pages of the little book, and the revelation it holds for all came to my waiting heart. The peace which passeth all understanding rested upon me, and joy too deep for words transformed my life. My prayers were answered, for I had found God in Christian science. The Bible, which I knew very little about, became my constant study, my joy, and my guide. The copy, which I bought at the time of my healing, was marked from Genesis to Revelation. It was so constantly in my hands for three years that the cover became worn and the leaves loose, so it was laid aside for a new one. Two or three o'clock in the morning often found me poring over its pages, which grew more and more sacred to me every day and the help I received therefrom was wonderful, for which I can find no words to express my gratitude. Initials I.L., Los Angeles, California. The Bible and the Christian Science Textbook are our only preachers. The scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our textbook These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their denominational spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth uncontaminated or fettered by human hypotheses, and authorized by Christ. And today's lesson sermon can be found on page 16 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Soul and Body. The golden text is from John. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, 
which the Son of Man shall give unto you. The responsive reading is from Psalms. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He turned the wilderness into a standing water, and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And so the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Imogene from Australia will now read. The Bible, Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Proverbs. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Matthew. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, No man can serve two masters, For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? 
Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith or shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy them victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. John. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. For I am come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. First Corinthians. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Second Corinthians. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, 
eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. First Thessalonians. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Soul is synonymous with spirit, God, the creative, governing, infinite principle outside of finite form which forms only reflect. Identity is a reflection of spirit, the reflection in multifarious forms of the living principle love. Soul is the substance, life and intelligence of man, which is individualized, but not in matter. Soul can never reflect anything inferior to spirit. Man is the expression of soul. The Indians caught some glimpses of the underlying reality when they called a certain beautiful lake the smile of the great spirit. Separated from man who expresses soul, spirit would be a non-entity. Man divorced from spirit who would lose his entity. But there is, there can be no such division for man is coexistent with God. The divine mind is the soul of man and gives man dominion over all things. Man was not created from a material basis nor bidden to obey material laws which spirit never made. His province is in spiritual statutes, in the higher law of mind. In divine science, man is sustained by God, the divine principle of being. The earth, at God's command, brings forth food for man's use. Knowing this, Jesus once said, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, presuming not on the prerogative of his creator, but recognizing God, the father and mother of all, able to feed and clothe man as he doth the lilies. Spirit duly feeds and clothes every object as it appears in the line of spiritual creation, thus tenderly expressing the fatherhood and motherhood of God. The divine mind, which forms the bud and blossom, will care for the human body even as it clothes the lily. But let no mortal interfere with God's government by thrusting in the laws of erring human concepts. The higher nature of man is not governed by the lower. If it were, the order of wisdom would be reversed. Our false views of life hide eternal harmony and produce the ills of which we complain. Christ, truth, gives mortals temporary food and clothing 
until the material transformed with the ideal disappears and man is clothed and fed spiritually. St. Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Science reveals spirit, soul as not in the body, and God as not in man, but as reflected by man. The greater cannot be in the lesser. The belief that the greater can be in the lesser is an error that works ill. This is the leading point in the science of soul, that principle is not in its idea. Spirit soul is not confined in man and is never in matter. When you say man's body is material, I say with Paul, be willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Give up your material belief of mind in matter and have but one mind, even God. For this mind forms its own likeness. The loss of man's identity through the understanding which science confers is impossible. And the notion of such a possibility is more absurd than to conclude that individual musical tones are lost in the origin of harmony. The so-called loss of matter and of medical science have never made mortals whole, harmonious, and immortal. Man is harmonious when governed by soul. Hence the importance of understanding the truth of being, which reveals the laws of spiritual existence. God never ordained a material law to annul the spiritual law. If there were such a material law, it would oppose the supremacy of spirit, God, and impugn the wisdom of the Creator. Jesus walked on the waves, fed the multitude, healed the sick, and raised the dead in direct opposition to material law. His acts were the demonstration of science overcoming the false claims of material sense or law. Knowing that soul and its attributes were forever manifested through man, the master healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the lame, thus bringing to light the scientific action of the divine mind on human minds and bodies and given a better understanding of soul and salvation. The recipe for beauty is to have less illusion and more soul, to retreat from the belief of pain or pleasure in the body into the unchanging calm and glorious freedom of spiritual harmony. Love never loses sight of loveliness, its halo rests upon its object. One marvels that a friend can ever seem less than beautiful. Men and women of riper years and larger lessons ought to ripen into health and immortality instead of lapsing into darkness or gloom. Immortal mind Feeds the body with supernal freshness and fairness, supplying it with beautiful images of thought and destroying the walls of sense, which each day brings to a nearer tomb. 
do you say the time has not yet come in which to recognize soul as substantial and able to control the body? Remember Jesus, who nearly 19 centuries ago demonstrated the power of spirit and said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And who also said, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, said Paul. Sooner or later, we shall learn that the fetters of man's finite capacity are forged by the illusion that he lives in body instead of in soul, in matter instead of in spirit. Dost thou love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind? This command includes much, even the surrender of all merely material sensation, affection, and worship. This is the El Dorado of Christianity. It involves the science of life and recognizes only the divine control of spirit in which soul is our master and material sense and human will have no place. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 253. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, low, sad, and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain, and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith and breathed in raptured song with love perfumed. Hymn number 253.
Let's now sing hymn number 280. Praise, my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like us his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Hymn number 280.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. <laughs> 